Good morning, everyone, and welcome back to another Mornings with the Masters, where we devote ourselves to the Lord <laughs> daily with you. Good morning, you guys. It is a great morning because we are picking up with a new devotional on the Bible app titled Killing Comparison. Mm -hmm. There's a link to that in the description if you guys want to follow along with us. And as always, I'm going to read the scripture, then Tori's going to pick up with the Devo. Let's do it. The scripture is Proverbs chapter 18, verse 21, and it says this, The tongue can bring death or life. Those who love to talk will reap the consequences. The devotional says this, Insecurity is at epic levels around the world because many of us see other people's success as our failure. But why is this and how do we get free from it? Well, let's start here. Have you ever considered the power of words? Have you ever considered how the words spoken over you have made you see yourself? In our focus scripture today, Proverbs 18, 21, the Bible tells us that the tongue has the power of life and death, and those who love it will eat its fruits. The word power here, translated in Hebrew, is yod, which means hand. This scripture then tells us that the tongue has the ability to create, shape, and mold either life or death in those it speaks over, just like a hand, which brings me to you. The root of insecurity is found in the words of death, discouragement, degradation that have been spoken over you, words that have fractured your identity. It may have happened in your childhood or it may have happened in your adulthood, but regardless of when it happened, the result is that you can't see yourself clearly because the cracks those words created in your identity have distorted how you see yourself. I understand this very well because I grew up morbidly obese. For the majority of my childhood and young adult, I was called fat, fatty, Miss Piggy, and more ultimately making me see myself as fat, ugly, and unattractive. In ninth grade, a boy told me, with a body like that, you're not good for anything except sex with the lights off. My word. Everyone busted out laughing while my heart shattered. His hurtful, deadly words slammed against the many cracks people's hurtful, deadly words had created in the way I saw myself through the years. And the force of his words broke my heart into a million pieces. The words that are spoken over you matter. And killing comparison requires investigating the words that have been spoken over you that have been the hands that have molded, shaped, and crafted your identity. Before our next session, Pray for God's grace to help you repair the ground of your identity. Ground that hurtful words have fractured. Words matter. Yeah, this is so good. Mm -hmm. and I love how it kind of piggybacks yesterday's yes, devotional about like identity too. and mm -hmm. self-worth. And, yeah. and this devotional just makes me think of this study that I had learned about back years ago. And basically the study was um, there was two groups of 10-year-olds and they put them into group A and group B. And then they gave them 10-year-old IQ tests. Mm -hmm. After they all completed the IQ test, they told group A. A, wow, you're so smart. Good for you. Yeah. You are so smart. They told group B, wow, you're so hardworking. Good for you. You're so hardworking. Right. So they switched rooms and then they gave them 12 year old IQ tests. Mm -hmm. And then only half of the class in group A, the kids who were told they were smart, were able to get the test done. Mm -hmm. And all of the kids in group B who were told they're hardworking were able to get the test done. Right. And whenever they asked the kids in group A, why, why weren't you able to do this? Mm -hmm. They said, oh, well, I just wasn't smart enough. Yeah. And when they asked the kids in group B, why were you able to do this? They said, oh, well, if I, I thought if I worked harder, I would figure it out. Right. And so I can't stress this enough to all of us. What we allow to be spoken over ourselves or what we didn't even, what we weren't aware of at the time that right. was spoken over us mm -hmm. does have a power over us. Yeah. And so we have to do exactly what this devotional said and right. investigate the words that were spoken over you. Right. Investigate them and say, wow, does this align with what God says about me? Right. Is this determining where I'm walking or yeah. am I allowing the truth that God says over me to determine where I walk? Right. This is so important. No, it's so good. And also so convicting for me. Like as you were talking, I just thought of so many different avenues in my life where I've allowed different words to hinder me moving forward or even just 
personally, like in my relationship with Chad, it's like we talk about all the time, like Chad is the dreamer in our relationship. And I tend to be more of like the realist, but it's almost like I've taken that on as part of my identity and it's stifled me from dreaming because I'm like oh no no no, you're the dreamer so you can do that and it's not until Chad like forces me into a spot where he's like where do you feel like God's calling you like what are your dreams and stop limiting and stop putting your dreams in a box that I actually can like formulate and Mm -hmm. think of good ideas and it's like I'm forced into it because I've told myself that I'm not I'm not the dreamer and it's like well that who said that I, mm-hmm. I did. I put that on myself and it's like, man, how that's limited me and how that's boxed me in. And I'm just curious, like maybe there's words that you've spoken over your life. Maybe it isn't something that someone else spoke over Ooh. you because the words you speak over yourself carry the power of life and death. And so maybe you are limiting yourself or maybe, I don't know, maybe we were talking about this in a devotional, um, a little while ago maybe you're looking in the mirror and you're saying you're ugly maybe you're saying you're fat maybe you're tearing yourself apart and realizing that that takes root in your heart and how important it is for the words we speak over ourselves to align with what God says about us because we want what we say about us to lead to good things to fruit and nothing good is going to happen when we're talking down to our ourselves and we're saying we are not this we are not that and it's like no let's speak life over ourselves, and let's speak life over our loved ones yeah something I just was thinking about as you were sharing was you know obviously if you read in Genesis and so many areas in scripture God's word is true right so whenever God speaks it, it happens is. it's right. an action it's a verb it, it literally it happens in the beginning right. God said right? right and then it happened right and so Do we allow that to be true in our own lives? When God says this about you, you need to understand that is true because God doesn't lie. And so it's so important for us to to not allow the deception of the schemer or our own insecurities or what other people are doing or saying about us to to deter us, to to detain, to destroy what God has said about us because what God says is true because it's literally, it's in his nature. And so I think it could be really good for us to do what we always say, you know, to write down the things, take an inventory, write down the things that you do say about yourself or you you allow other people to say about you or things you've been holding on to. And then apply it against what God says about you because scripture says that his thoughts about you outnumber the sand on the beach. Yep. So good. Want to pray something out? I do. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we love you. We thank you that your word is true. Lord, we pray that you would give us eyes to see the words that we have held on to and allowed to shape who we believe we are that goes against who you say we are, Father. Would you help us correct that? Father, would you help us see ourselves through your eyes and not our own? We can't do it without you. So we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen, God. Amen, God. Amen, y'all. And now it's that perfect time to break out the worship music, break out the journal, and continue pressing to the Lord. Yes, and y'all don't forget that you are God's masterpiece. And don't forget that we love you. We love you guys, and we're talking to you tomorrow. Arrivederci. Arrivederci.